evening, guys, or afternoon or evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Mr. Donnelly here. Today we're going to discuss balancing chemical equations. Balancing chemical equations is really important in chemistry because it allows us to properly acknowledge and follow the law of conservation of matter. Perhaps you remember from earlier in the school year, we discussed the law of conservation of matter, which said nothing can be created or destroyed. It simply changes form. And in chemistry, that's true, just as in the rest of the universe, we assume that's true as well. So today, what we're going to do is learn how to balance chemical equations, learn how to identify some different types of chemical equations. So to start off with, let's uh, look at um, learning how to identify some different types of chemical equations. So I'm going to write here on the board, I'm going to write the first equation we're going to look at, and that's going to be um, the formation of water. So if I take two H2s plus an O2 and put them together, maybe add some heat or something, I'll get um, two H2Os. So this is the formation of water, and what's nice about this chemical equation is I balanced, for, balanced it for you already where we have two hydrogens times two hydrogens gives us four hydrogens, two hydrogens times two hydrogens gives us four hydrogens, two oxygens, and two oxygens. That gives us a balanced chemical equation. We have equal numbers of atoms on, or molecules on the left-hand side of the equation on the, and on the right-hand side of the equation. So this, is a, this particular equation happens to be what we call a synthesis of reaction. So looking at your notes and making sure you're following along and filling this in as we, we go, You'll notice that the first part of your notes here asks you to identify a synthesis, re synthesis reaction. So when we're talking about the different types of reactions, we can express them with just any, um, any type of letter uh, that we want to use to take the place of an atom or a, a molecule. So in this case, for your example of a synthesis reaction, I'm going to use A as one of the atoms plus B as the other atom, and that's going to yield a new um, product called AB. So you can see them combining two things together to make something brand new. Uh, on the left-hand side of the equation, we have what you call the reactants. So these are the reactants. They get together to make something new. And then the product is what's formed from the react reactants going through the reaction. So those are the products. Okay? So that's our first type of chemical reaction. Uh, it's also considered to be balanced, right, because I have equal numbers of atoms on both sides, and that's the point of balancing chemical equations. We need to have equal numbers of atoms on both the left-hand side of the equation and the right-hand side of the chemical equation. So let's move on and do the next one. I think we have five in total we have to learn. So we, we did an example of water. Our next, uh, our next example is going to be a decomposition reaction. And for, fortunately for us, the decomposition reaction can be... Um, demonstrated quite nicely using the decomposition of water. So here we go with the decomposition of water. Um, we start off with water, two H2Os. We break them apart or decompose them into two H2s and one O2. So you can see if we want to go back and count the atoms here, we have four hydrogens and four hydrogens, two oxygens and two oxygen. So we have a decomposition reaction. And with a decomposition reaction, we can also show that with just some random letters that we might pick. A and B, we heat it up. I'm sorry, we run electricity through it. Uh, you run electricity through water, you can decompose the water into, um, or you can decompose the water into its hydrogen and oxygen parts. So this is an example. This is a general example for the decomposition of water here. A, B, uh, run some electricity through it, and you get A plus B. All right, so that's it. That's the decomposition reaction. Let me write that over here, uh, since I didn't write it at the top. So this is decomposition reaction. And just like um, earlier on when I had um, circled, here we have on the left-hand side the reactants, reactants, and on the right-hand side we have the products. It doesn't really matter whether you're going through a decomposition reaction or a synthesis reaction or a combustion reaction, or a single displacement reaction, or a double displacement reaction. Every single time we have a reaction, the um, reactants are on the left-hand side of the equation, and on the right-hand side are the, are the products, okay? So for the next type, we're gonna do is the single replacement reaction. So we'll write that on the board this time, I won't forget. So we're doing a single replacement reaction. And a good example for a single uh, replacement reaction would be lithium bromide plus the molecule fluoride yields a 
lithium fluoride plus a bromine, okay? So in that example here, in this example, we have this uh, broken down. You might notice that the fluorine took the place of the bromine over here, right? So what we have to do is, is we have to go ahead and identify this in um, some arbitrary letters just to show what a single replacement reaction is. So here we can say that A and B plus C breaks apart and flips around and A goes with C and B is left behind, okay? So just to, again, I'll highlight this. These are the reactants. And on the right-hand side, you have the products. Hopefully that's starting to stick in your heads now. Okay, so let's move on. The next one we're gonna talk about is a double displacement reaction. Double displacement reactions or double replacement reactions, however you wanna to refer to them. Um, you might uh, be thinking to yourself, that's when um, more than one atom place is taken at least two or a double um, displacement occurs and you would be correct. So double replacement is next. And for double replacement, we're going to do um, lithium fluoride plus iron to bromide yields, uh, what's it gonna yield? It's gonna li yield lithium bromide plus iron to fluoride, okay? So that's an example, let me slide this over a little bit. I couldn't see that now, maybe you can see it a little better, sorry guys. So that's gonna be an example of the fluorine switching places with the bromine. Now, just to give ourselves a little room here, I'm gonna erase this one and we're gonna use, um, we're gonna show this chemical reaction in letters, just arbitrary letters, so AB, plus CD is going to yield AC plus BD. Okay, so that would be an example of a double replacement. And it, yep, you guessed it, and I'm gonna simplify this at this time. These are the reactants on that side, and on this side are the products, okay? So very good with that. So we got one more of these different types of reactions to talk about, then we're gonna actually learn how to go in and balance the chemical reactions. So the last one we gotta talk about is combustion. So combustion is what happens inside of a car engine uh, when you turn it on and it continues to happen as your car drives along. Also happens when water's formed. Even though you can say synthesis, um, that water is a synthesis reaction, it, it also takes combustion to form water, which is really unusual uh, to think about. You need fire to, um, to make water, but that, that is the case. So the combustion reaction that we're going to demonstrate would be methane. H4 plus O2. So methane plus oxygen is going to give us carbon dioxide plus water. Now this, to balance this, I have to put another two over here. Um, so that would be the combustion of methane to form water and carbon dioxide. So for the combustion reaction, we're not going to use arbitrary letters, and the reason is is because every time there is a combustion reaction that occurs in the products, there will be an oxygen in the products. I'm sorry, let me say that again. There'll be an oxygen in the reactants. There'll be an oxygen in the reactants. And in the products, you're going to have water form. So every time a combustion reaction happens, you have water in the products and oxygen oxygen in the reactants okay so that's really important in identifying so now you've seen what was that four or five different types of uh, chemical reactions the only ones you'll have to worry about in this class there's a couple others but this is what we're going to worry about in this class we're going to learn how to balance some of the chemical reactions now so i, I gave you your worksheet and you can see that it says on the next worksheet, please balance the following reactions. Be sure to show your work. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to balance these chemical reactions. And hopefully, uh, although it's tricky, hopefully you'll pick it up relatively quick, quickly. Some students get this right away. For some reason, they're just really good at them. Others struggle. Either, either way, whatever kind of student you turn out to be for this, uh, we'll work through it, okay? So the first one 
was nitrogen plus hydrogen. Nitrogen plus hydrogen yields ammonia, right? Or as you might um, remember, nitrogen trihydride. Okay. So what we want to do here is make sure we have equal numbers of nitrogens on both sides and hydrogens on both sides. As you can see, it's unbalanced right now. I have two nitrogens here and one nitrogen here. I have two hydrogens here and three hydrogens here. So that's not good. We have to go in and make sure, to follow, following the law of conservation of matter, we have to go in and make sure that all of our atoms and molecules are balanced and in alignment. So what we always do is we're just gonna break, you can do this on your paper, break that in half with your reactants on the left-hand side and your products on the right-hand side and create a chart. Now, when we create our chart, the purpose here is to keep track of the number of atoms and molecules we have on both sides. So the way I do that is uh, I write my N, and I had equal two atoms there, and then I'm going to write my H, and that equals two atoms there. And then I'm going to go over onto my, my uh, product side, and uh, my N, I have one N there, and over here I have three H's, so I have three H's over here. Now, you might ask yourself, what can I multiply one by to get two? And if you did that, you would say, well, I can multiply one by two to get two. And that's what I'm gonna do here. Notice that, that I have two nitrogens on both sides. I wanna get my nitrogens equal to one another. So what I can do is, is I can say to myself, one times two is two. And I can just go ahead and change what we call the coefficient up front. So this now, I just gave this a coefficient of two, but that changes everything in the products. As soon as I put in a number, a co new coefficient in, it changes everything in the product here. So instead of having one nitrogen now, I have two nitrogens. So just keeping track, I'm gonna cross out my one and say now I have two nitrogens, but that didn't just change my nitrogens, you see, because when you put a coefficient in front of a molecule, it also changes every other atom that's behind its coefficient, okay? So I have two nitrogens here, and then two hydrogens times three hydrogen. As you know, two times three is six hydrogens. So now I have to change my hydrogens to six, all right? So I'm gonna go back and look, and you can see it's still out of balance, right? I have, I have six hydrogens over here, and two hydrogens over here. So what I wanna ask myself is, what can I multiply two by to get six? Well, obviously, two goes into six three times, right? So that means if I just put a three in front of the hydrogen, a coefficient of three in front of the hydrogen, all of a sudden, I have three times two hydrogens now, and that gives me six hydrogens. Now I'm gonna look at the chart I have here, and notice I have two nitrogens and two nitrogens. I have six hydrogens and six hydrogens. The equation at the top, the answer, this is the answer up here, not down here, this is your work you showed. The answer is N2 plus 3H2 yields two ammonias, or two NH3s, okay? So this is the answer. This is a correctly balanced chemical equation. Let's go ahead and look at another one. It looks like the, another, the next one that you guys have is potassium chlorate yields potassium chloride plus um, oxygen, okay? So let's go ahead and write that one down and we're gonna balance that one. Now, these are um, more or less the, the more simple types of chemical equations we're balancing. They get much more complex, but we'll stay with the simple ones for today in your worksheet that you're gonna get along with what I do on the board. So this is uh, potassium chlorate. KClO3 um, gives KCl, or yields KCl, plus uh, O2. Okay. So, just like before, we're going to keep a tally of the number of atoms of or molecules on both sides of the chemical equation. So, here we go. We're going to break that in half. Do that on your paper. Make your T chart. Let's follow what we have. I have 1K. 1K. I have one Cl, and I have three oxygens. So those are my three oxygens, my one Cl, and my one K. All right, so I'm gonna keep tally and see how I make that on the other side. Maybe it's balanced already, I don't know. Sometimes that happens, but I don't think this one is. So I have one K, and I have one Cl, 
Oh, that's good. And I have two oxygens, okay? So let's go back and look at our tally. Ks are balanced, CLs are balanced. Uh-oh, oxygens aren't. So what do I do? Well, I know that um, the, uh, if I take two, two and multiply it by three, I can get six. And I know that three goes, that, therefore I know that three goes into six two times, and two goes into um, six three times. So what I'm just gonna do is, is I'm going to say, and this is kind of like the, the tricky part here when the math comes in, you gotta think through um, least common multiples and stuff like that. I'm gonna say two times three is six, and three goes into six two times. So I'm gonna put a three in front of the O2. All right, so I just kind of, I picked the three because it made logical sense there. I'm going to cross out my two, and now I have um, a new amount of oxygens. I have three times two, that's six oxygens now. My Ks are still in balance, my CLs are still in balance. Uh-oh, my Os are out of balance. Now what I can say to myself is, how many times does three go into six? Oh, okay, I can make six oxygens then by putting a two here, okay. So now I got my six oxygens, right? Because two times three is six, but my potassiums are out of balance now, right? When I put that two in front, now I have two Ks and I also have two CLs. So while trying to get the oxygens in balance, everything else fell apart, right? But that's okay because I can go back and balance the Ks and CLs on the product side very simply, like, much like the way I balanced the very first chemical equation we talked about, 1K, 2Ks, I can multiply 1 by 2. That changes my Ks. I get 2 potassiums, and remember that 2 is also, mul also multiplied by the CL, then I get 2 CLs. And then if I go back and look at what I got here, 2Ks, 2Ks, um, two uh, CLs, two CLs, six oxygens, six oxygens. The answer, this is not the answer at the bottom like I said earlier, this is the work you showed. The answer is at the top. The recipe for the formation of potassium chloride through the decombustion of potassium chlorate into oxygen and that potassium chloride, okay? So that's the balanced chemical reaction there. So I'm gonna do one more for you before I sign off and let you guys practice on your own. Here, and this last one is, looks like it's sodium chloride plus the molecule fluoride yields sodium fluoride and chlorine. So this is, or chloride, I'm sorry. So this is a um, single replacement reaction for this next one. All right, so um, NaCl, sodium chloride uh, plus fluoride gives us or yields sodium fluoride and chloride. So one of the things I forgot to mention, and I'm kind of embarrassed to say that I forgot to mention this because this is really important. So mark this down in your heads right now. We talked about these little numbers that come at the bottom and referred to them as subscripts before. When we balance chemical equations, we never, ever, ever, ever change the subscripts. Our subscripts always remain the same. The only thing we change is that big number in front we've been talking about called the coefficient. So if I come by while you're working today and I look and see that you've changed the subscript, we'll talk. I'll remind you about this part of the video and then you'll go back and you'll correct yourself. You only change the coefficients. The big numbers in front cannot touch the subscripts because if you touch the subscript, it actually makes a brand new uh, type of molecule, okay, or atom. Not really a new type of atom, but a, a new type of molecule. Anyway, last one. Here we go. So divide it in half just like you've been doing. Tally or keep track of your molecules. I have Na, I have Cl. I have F, I have one Na, I have one Cl, and I have two Fs. Not good on the report card. Other side, I have one, one Na, I have two, two Cls, and I have one F. All right. 
in balance? Doesn't look like it, right? What we want to do is we want to get our atoms balanced on both sides. So what's something we can do to balance the atoms on both sides? Well, we change the coefficients while we leave the subscripts alone, correct? So let's go ahead and see if we can balance this out. So my CLs uh, look to be a major problem here. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to put a 2 in front of the NA so I can change my number of CLs. If I put a 2 here, it means I have two NAs, but I also have two CLs now. So I'm going to change my CLs first. I got two CLs, right? Two CLs. Now I also have two, two NAs. So two NAs. And I have two Fs. So let's go back and look. Okay, so I balanced my chlorines, right? I balanced my chlorines out, but my sodium's out of balance and my fluorines are out of balance. So what can I do? Well, we all know that um, in order to get, uh, doing a little multiplication here, in order to get two NAs, we just multiply one, one NA by the number two in its coefficient. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put two up there. So now I have two NAs, right? So we can see that two NAs, but that also changed my fluorine. Now I have two fluorines as well, two fluorines. Now let's go back and check. Did I tally this up and balance this chemical equation right, or is there more work I have to do? Two NAs, two NAs, two chlorines, two chlorines, two fluorines, two fluorines. Aha, my equation's balanced, and I'm going to box off my balanced chemical equation here because this up here is the answer. This is your work, and I've said that three times now. And the reason why I said that three times is because my students throughout the years, um, while they get good at balancing chemical equations, they think the answer is down here. I'm not sure why. The answer is up here in our recipe. This is a recipe for the for formation of sodium fluoride and chlorine from um, the single displacement reaction of sodium chloride plus fluorine, okay? So next, guys, work on that worksheet that I gave you balancing those chemical equations on a separate sheet of paper, and I'll be around during class to help you to make sure you got the hang of it and you're doing it right. Have a great rest of your day.